Hello, and welcome to our channel, The Watchful Warrior. I am The Watchful Wife. And recently, I was in the city of Boston, Massachusetts, and I had taken a lot of pictures that I thought I would put up here, and you can take a peek at them and see what you think about Boston and the old world. This is a map of Boston Common, and Boston Common is known to be the oldest city park in the United States, dating back from 1634. It is also part of the Emerald Necklace, which is a string of parks that was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted back in the 1860s. This is the bandstand that is on the common. I wasn't able to get too close to it because, as you can see, there's something going on there, but it really looks very old world. Supposedly, this structure was built in 1908. Here we go. I was able to find something online that was a little bit closer. So yeah, this definitely looks old world to me with some of the features of it, the pillars with the scrolls on the top, the granite around the bottom of it uh, does look mud flooded to me with a door that's halfway <laughs> down in the ground there. And then the dome shaped roof and there are some you know, some shell shaped figures um, around that top of that uh, roof there. This is the victory column, which is found on a hill, which is in the center of Boston Common. It is called the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, which was erected in memory of the Massachusetts soldiers and sailors who died in the, the American Civil War. It was designed by Martin Milmore in 1874. On the right hand side above the top of the column is an allegorical female figure entitled America. She faces south and wears a tiara of 13 stars. Her left hand holds the United States flag and her right hand clutches a laurel wreath and sword. And then there's bronze statues around the corners of the monument representing various things. But I assume those statues were just added on and that this large stone column is really what we see that's left of the old world. And then I walked up Beacon Street. Beacon Street is on the north side of Boston Common, and it's really known for a lot of the brownstones. The street goes up a large hill, and it's definitely mud flooded in appearance. And then you can see all these beautiful buildings with a brick and all of the um, fine details around all the windows and the doorways. And these are just some of the buildings that I came across. I was just really amazed by all of the intricate details and the scroll work, the archways, the large doorway. On the left here is a home that has some ironwork. And then you can see, I was just really interested by on the top of the windows on the left, you can see there's a lot of shell work that appears to be like a green copper color. So I thought that was really interesting. I couldn't really get a really good picture of it. But and then on the right, just you can see more of Beacon Hill. On the left here is a home, which I did take a picture of it from farther away so you can see it, but just, just thought it was interesting with the stonework there. And, and then on the right is a building, just several buildings with a lot of the brick and the ironwork and the copper up at the top. And then I took a picture of this gas lamp. I know there's a couple of pictures in here with, with gas lamps. And Beacon Hill is known to have 2,800 gas lamps. And the gas lighting in Boston dates back to 1828. And it is in various parts of the city. Beacon Hill is most well known for these lamps. On the left here is a beautiful brick building. There are some gas lamps. And then you can see the copper that runs vertically uh, over the windows in the foregrounds and also in the, the back towards the background of this picture. And then if you look towards the sidewalk where the fire hydrant is, you can definitely see some mud flooding there with the windows that are going below the ground. And then on the right side, I just, you can also see more mud flooding and I like the pillar with the scrolls. So here are some of these buildings looking a little bit farther away. So you can see more of the detailing and the copper that is along the building on the roof line and the building on the left side. Looks like some slate roof too, from what I can see. 
And here is that white building that was in one of the pictures, the close-up version. And it just looks really interesting with the two kind of um, cylinders, I guess, and the kind of the front of the building. So we were really curious as to what this might have been. And here is another angle of that building. You can see more of how the road sort of slants upwards. And then the beautiful brick buildings with the copper detail and the chimneys. Here we have another victory monument located more on the southern part of the common. This is the Boston Massacre Monument. It's also known as the Crispus Attucks Monument and Victory, and it was installed in 1889. And this is another granite obelisk. And I thought the base was really interesting. Those, I don't know what are those called, the metal pieces that are on the base of the monument. And then we have the copper statues, which I imagine were added on at some point in time. And then I walked along Tremont Street in one of the side streets that runs up to the east of the park. And I just thought these buildings were really fascinating. All of the brickwork and the copper along the roof line. And then you can see some of the details, the arches around the windows and that sort of thing. And right on Tremont Street is a Masonic building. So I did take a picture of that. You can see some of the intricate details on this building on the right side. And I, I took a closer picture of the symbols that are along the side of the building. And this building was really, really fascinating. Very detailed work. Um, on the left side, on the right of the picture, there's like a little figure type person. I don't really know what that was all about. It was kind of strange looking, but the rest of it was very ornate details, scrolls and leaves and things like that. And then again, on the left side, there's a beautiful um, stone building with copper looks like a lamppost or something on the balcony there and then on the right there's a beautiful brick building and I thought what was interesting were those three kind of I don't know what they're called tower silo type of things on the top of the roof with the windows kind of interesting so here's an interesting one for you this is Boston's best kept old world secret this is the Steinert Hall, and it was established in 1896 by German immigrant Steinerts and Son when, um, at a time when Boston was known for its piano manufacturing. And this hall was nicknamed Little Jewel because of the acoustics. And I thought this was something interesting that I found online, but the hall is located four stories below ground and yeah it's just really interesting i didn't realize that this hall existed i'd heard of steiner obviously but never heard of this hall so good little secret here we have a picture of Steiner Hall a little bit farther away the pianos were sold on the ground floor and then the recital hall was four stories below ground and was a small hall, but also attracted the finest classical musicians and opera performers of the day. 
but it kind of blows my mind that it's four stories below ground. So that probably means that most of these buildings around here are supposed to be much taller. At the very southern end of the Boston Common is Central Burying Ground. It dates back from 1756. And honestly, just looking at it, you can't really get inside because you can see there's a iron fence all the way around it, but it looks just like the top of a buried building. And it was very oddly shaped. You can see there's this kind of oval, I don't really know what shape it would be, but I guess an oval kind of in the middle of the cemetery and it drops down and there's that granite wall with the little doors all the way around. And then you can see the brick in the background with some kind of strange wood pieces or stone sticking out. And here's a view of that lengthwise. I guess it's not really oval, but <laughs> kind of a box-like shape, I guess. It's very intriguing. This picture is of the Boston Public Garden, which is really a beautiful garden that sits adjacent to the Boston Common. It's also part of the Emerald Necklace. And it was established in 1837. And part of Boston is called the Back Bay, and it's another really interesting deep dive to get into at some point in time, but it was filled in in the 1800s. It sat on mudflats and then was filled in, and the public garden, apparently this was um, part of what was also filled in here. And this is the home of the Swan Boats. This plaque was found on a gate in the public garden and it translates to God be like our fathers given to the city government in 1822 AD and then in the middle Boston is founded in 1630. And just the whole Latin language is very intriguing and why it's actually considered a dead language and only used by the Catholic Church and things like that. If you know, let me know in a comment. And this is a statue of a Unitarian minister. It sits across from the church that he ministered back in um, 1803. And I just thought that, I'm assuming that the statue was added on at a later point in time, but the granite work is really, really pretty. As you can see, I have a close up on the right side of this, the seashells on the top and the beautiful details. This is the Arlington Street Church. It sits right across from the public garden and it was completed in 1861. This beautiful building here is actually the flagship store of Restoration Hardware, interestingly enough. The building was established in the 1860s. And then on the right side there with the church, that church is located on Newberry Street, one of Boston's famous streets and it's called Church of the Covenant. And now we're heading down Boylston Street, and this is the side of the building for Restoration Hardware. And you can see the grating um, in the foreground of the picture on the left. I did look down it. It looked like it went down maybe about a story, and I didn't really see too much else, though. Um, but just really beautiful, beautiful details. It looks, the building looks a little bit mud flooded, as you can see. Here is the back side of the building, and I just thought it was interesting because you can see windows down towards the bottom there, so it did look pretty mud flooded. And, and then this building, just beyond it, the white building, is just a really beautiful building with a gold dome on the top, and right now it houses a lot of stores and shops inside of it. This is the Warren Chambers building and it was established in 1896. I was
pretty uh, impressed by the large archway and the columns that are around the entrance. It's really pretty. This interesting building here is the Berkeley Building. It's located on the corner of Berkeley and Boylston Streets. And I just thought that this was really fascinating. It kind of looks like, I don't know, antennas on the top of it. This was completed in 1905 and also has a lot of copper on the facade and just some really interesting details. This is Trinity Church in Copley Square and it was dedicated in the 1870s. And according to their website, the church is known to be one of America's top 10 buildings and a masterpiece of American architecture. A hundred years ago, the American Association of Architects named Trinity Church of Boston one of the most significant buildings in the country. So this is the front of the church. It does have a lot of religious figures on it and some kind of strange looking figures as well. So I didn't really get a warm fuzzy feeling by really looking at the details of the church. But I did try to take some close ups of it so you can see. So Trinity Church was constructed between 1872 and 1877, and the building was designed by Henry Hobson Richardson. The church is the building that actually established Richardson re reputation. It is the birthplace and archetype of the Richardsonian Romanesque style, which I think we also saw this in Lowell too, if I'm not mistaken. So on the right-hand side, I blew up what was sort of in the center of the, the front of the church. And you can see what I was talking about with the religious figures. So across the top is like a gargoyle figure and then sort of cherub uh, heads with angel wings, I think. And then, I don't know, some of it was just really strange looking. But here's another perspective of that same area, just zoomed out a little bit. But what I also notice was on the top of those columns towards the bottom of the screen. It's just really interesting figures. There's some eagles it looked like and maybe, I don't know, ox with some wings. It just looked really strange. It didn't give a warm, fuzzy, spiritual feeling whatsoever in this church. And then this is the very bottom of the columns and you can see there's some circular area etched into the stone and those were again kind of strange looking animal figures. The Richardsonian Romanesque style is characterized by a clay roof, polychromy, rough stone, heavy arches, and a massive tower. This style was soon adopted for a number of public buildings across the United States. The stone used was Dedham granite. This is according to Wikipedia. The building's plan is a modified Greek cross with four arms extending outwards from the central tower, which stands 64 meters or 211 feet tall. And more of what I was talking about, the back bay with being filled in. Uh, Wikipedia says, having been built in Boston's back bay, which was originally a mudflat, Trinity rests on some 4,500 wooden piles, each driven through 30 feet of gravel, fill, silt, and clay, and constantly wetted by the water table of the back bay as they will rot if exposed to air. Yeah, so the back bay story is definitely something that I should take a closer look at. So on the left side is more strange gargoyles. And then on the right side, you can see some of the interesting sort of towers there. Turrets, I guess they're called. So this is coming around the side. And so you can see more of the tower on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, there was this area where it was obviously mud flooded. Um, 
So there's stairways here that lead down to a door. So definitely some mud flooding going on. The doorway within this picture was located on the side of the church. And this seemed to be an example of a small doorway within a large doorway. But then I was also thinking people would have to take stairs to get up into the door. And then if the building was mud flooded, then the entrance would probably have been in a different location. But anyways, just something interesting to think about. So more from Wikipedia. So Trinity Church is the only church in the United States and the only building in Boston that has been honored as one of the 10 most significant buildings in the United States by the American Institute of Architects. In 1885, the architects voted Trinity Church as the most important building in the United States. Trinity Church is the only building from the original 1885 list that are on the current top 10 list. There you go. And so the back of the church is actually a lot more pretty than the front. Like I was saying, there's really strange kind of figures in the front. But the back had less, a lot less of that and was really pretty. I like the, the round turrets and the towers, just a really pretty view. And then you can see towards the ground, there is a lot of mud flooding going on. And then there's some copper finials. It does look like a slate roof on this building as well. And you can see more of the mud flooding. This is really a beautiful, beautiful section of the church. Just really stunning. And this was an older drawing that I had found of the interior plan. So I just thought that was interesting and thought I would include it for you. So here's an older picture. And... I don't know, the architecture is just really stunning. It kind of reminds me of a really small version of the Frontenac, maybe, in Quebec. It's just um, with a big tower, kind of just remind me a little bit of it. But really beautiful, beautiful building. And so, like many cities that we are hearing about, Boston has had also succumbed to a big fire. It was called the Summer Street Fire. And this is actually part of Trinity Church's history. So Trinity Church supposedly was located on Summer Street and was part of this great fire and was destroyed. And then it was moved to the current location on Boylston Street. And the Summer Street Fire was also known as the Great Fire of 1872, and it destroyed the entire church building. And then the congregation moved to the new building in the Back Bay in 1877. And this older church here was actually organized in 1728. And Boston is also home to another very well-known church called the Ching, uh, King's Chapel. And so when the King's Chapel became overcrowded, they supposedly built this Trinity Church and opened in 1735. And here we have the interior of the old Trinity Church. And I found this online. I'm pretty sure it's the old one because it said that it was released in 1860, something like that. So that would have been before the new church was established. So pretty interesting, huh? So, so this picture here looks like the current church that's located in the back bay. These pictures here, the yellow pictures, I actually found in a collection from the New York Public Library that was online. I did find the um, kind of those symbols on the outer edges were interesting. I note that there's an obelisk on one of them and I'm not sure what the other one is, but just thought that was interesting. Um, Trinity Church sits on Copley Square and if you turn with your back facing the church, this building would be on your left-hand side, and this is the Copley Square Hotel. It's another really beautiful building. This building was built in 1891, supposedly. Directly facing Trinity Church is the Boston Public Library. It was established in 1848. This building is really beautiful as well. It has a lot of interesting architecture and I'm not going to really get into it right now. They actually do tours of this building, but it's really pretty. And this church sits across the street from the library, and it is Old South Church. It was established in 1873, and I don't have a really good picture of the building. Unfortunately, the steeple is under construction, but you can see the 
beautiful, stunning copper dome. Here's the, the church from Wikipedia. So I was able to locate a picture that I had taken over the summer of the church and so the tower is more exposed here, so you can see the whole thing. And then as an added bonus, I also found these pictures of the Church of the Covenant that I had taken during the summer. And if you remember, Church of the Covenant was back when I was talking about the Restoration Hardware Store. Um, the church was kind of in the background. So this is actually a really big church and it's very very beautiful the church is located on Newberry Street which actually parallels Boylston Street and it was designed by Richard M Upjohn who insisted on a high gothic edifice and the steeple measures 240 feet or 73 meters high the building was built between 1865 and 1867, and it is a National Historic Landmark. We hope you enjoyed the video and we hope to get back to Boston sometime soon and take some more pictures for you. Thank you for watching.